Hi, this is Pete Lyons with Let's Play Salesforce, and in this Einstein Analytics video, we're going to be taking on an advanced SQL challenge by using SQL and SQL together for white space analysis. So right off the bat, I don't really see anything wrong with this. It's giving me great insights into what we're selling. But the real problem is that it doesn't give us insights into what we're not selling. So think of it like uh, I've got a menu and I've got receipts for all the different menu items that I've sold. If I don't sell a particular menu item, it's not going to be in my pile of receipts, so it's not going to be reflected in the data set. Now, the uh, example that we're going to walk through here, this is certainly not the only way to solve this problem. There are a variety of ways, and I've already tackled this with my Advanced Data Modeling Part 1 video for uh, parents with or without children. But there are a lot of use cases where you might not want to create a data set like that because it is a little bit more uh, complex, a little bit more advanced, a little harder for uh, end users to explore. And maybe you just don't have access to the data flow. Maybe you're allowed to build and curate dashboards, but a different team is responsible for curating your data sets. So if we flip over to this dashboard, though, we can see, well, we're also selling mystery meat and tofu, but we're just not selling a whole lot of it. And what we've actually done here is we've taken our data set and we've augmented it with a SQL query to get this SQL SQL union here, which is going to allow us to see those gaps in our uh, insights here. So let's jump right in and actually build this thing. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is actually get our SQL query going. And unfortunately, this is not something that we can do in the, in the UI currently. But the example that I'm gonna be showing you is basically taken directly from documentation. And then all I've done is just tweak it a little bit to uh, you know suit our needs a little better. So I've got this SQL query that I'm basically just gonna drop right in here. Uh, it's select name and count of IDs from my product, grouping by the name and ordering by the name. Uh, and then, you know, I have uh, EXPR0, which is the first expression that's going to return our count of rows. We don't really need it. We, it's just more that we need to uh, group by our name. So now that we've got this SQL step actually in place, we're going to get an invalid JSON error because I'm terrible at this. I'm missing a comma right here, separating this step from the next step. So that should resolve that error. Now, we should be able to get this on our dashboard here and start to see where we're actually seeing some differences. So what we see is now we have a list of all of our products and we do see that mystery meat and tofu are rightly, rightly so not being sold. I do like some tofu, but I find that most people just don't know how to cook it. So now we're going to need to filter this because I already know I'm selling burgers and burritos and salads and all those things, so I really don't need those coming through my SQL step. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in a not in clause so that I can filter out the results that I've already got in my, my standard visualization on the left here. So let's start by getting a placeholder filter in, in there so that we can make sure that we're actually doing this correctly. So it's going to need to go before the group by clause and we're going to add a where clause. So I've added where name is not in burger or salad, and let's just confirm that those drop off the list. All right, cool. So one problem that we now have though is when we go to bind the results that are coming from this list, the shape of our data that's gonna be returned to our SQL step is gonna be in a completely different format. So the format that I would expect to see that, uh, that data returned in is gonna look a little bit like this. So when we're working with SQL, the return from our column binding is going to be an array in uh, square brackets and our string values are going to be in double quotes while with the SQL query we need them in parentheses and we need single quotes instead of double quotes. So to get around that problem we're going to use a join data manipulation function and what this is going to do is it's going to take our array and it's going to flatten it into a string and that'll get us around the problem. So first we're going to put the, uh, the parentheses and the outermost quotes in place. And then we're going to put our binding inside here. So we're going to start by creating our binding. So I got a binding here. And I want to return a column. And I want to return that column as a string. Now my column is what I, uh, my column is my input. And that's what I'm going to need to wrap the join function around. 
So the join is going to take two arguments here. And what this is going to do is it's going to take all the members of our array, it's going to turn them into a string, and we're going to give it a delimiter. So our delimiter is going to be a single quote, a comma, and a single quote. And then we do need to give it to, uh, give it to the system as a string. So I'm going to do slash quote here, and then I'm going to do another slash quote here. So now we can start filling in the rest of our binding as usual, and that's just going to be uh, telling the column uh, function which step, whether it's selection or result, and uh, what column we want to pull off that. So I'm going to do my opies, which is the step that's currently on the screen pulling off the real data set, dot result, and then an array for the column or columns we want to pass in. And that's going to be comma delimited uh, strings in quotes. So we got to escape our quotes and then put another slash in there. And the column that we want is going to be my product, double underscore C. So this should now actually filter based on the results that are coming through. So let's see if that works or if I broke everything horribly. So I'm going to hit Control A and Control C so that if it did break horribly, I still have the code that I just wrote. Well, it looks like it actually worked. So now we're only seeing the values over here that are not represented in our data set. We're making some good progress here. So I'm going to go ahead and save my dashboard, my new dashboard, so I can just save my progress. So now I'm going to need to create a new SACL step. And the problem with this, again, is that my column binding is going to return an array of values. And really what I need is going to be one row for each value that's in that array. So I do have to build out some placeholder SACL for that. So I'm going to open a step on the data set, flip over into SACL mode. And I'm going to start by dropping uh, this placeholder query in here. And we'll walk through this line by line and take a look at it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split off my streams here. And I'm going to Q, Q equals load opties. Ignore this for a moment right here. This is going to represent the real query that we're going to union back up with in a little bit. But for now, we need to build out a dummy data set uh, that we can actually union that with. So I'm going to group Q by all. And what that's going to do is it's going to reduce Q to just one row. And then as I branch it into different streams, we see that Q1 through Q10, this will now be 10 different streams that each have one row. And I'm going to fake all the values for them. So I'm going to generate a zero as quantity. And I'm going to generate placeholder as name. And you'll notice that I've got to switch back and forth between the names of my columns a little bit because on my on my my opties data set it's called quantity double underscore C and instead of name because it's the product name we have my product double underscore C. So we will have to make sure that our column names get aligned. Now for now I just want placeholder as my value. So then the next thing we have to do is we have to actually union all of that up and that's going to give us a data set with 10 rows in it. Now when we get down to here this is just our real query, you know, give me the actual real data that is coming through. And the way that I got this is I just took that original compact form step, I flipped it into SACL, and the only change that I made was I changed my product to name, and I changed quantity to get rid of the double underscore C. So then when I union those together, now I have a data set that can contain all of those placeholder rows that I've created. I'm going to union that together with my real data. I'm going to group it by name and then actually just do my aggregation. And this filter down here, we'll cover that in just a minute. So now I'm going to go ahead and run that. And we see that we do have all of the rows that were coming through our normal step. And then we've got a zero for placeholder. So we actually have 10 rows in there, but because they all had a quantity of zero and they all had the name placeholder, they're flattening down to one row. Now, the interesting thing about this is this null line here. We're going to get to that when we start talking about the binding that we have to do. So let's take a look at the binding. I'm just going to get myself some white space here. And I'm going to grab an example of this binding that we're going to replace the placeholder with. So this is the binding that we're going to use. And unfortunately, I can't do the bindings in the SACL editor UI for now. So we're going to have to do that in the JSON editor. But basically, we're going to pull the name column from our uh, filtered SQL. And we're going to use the value at function. And what that's going to allow us to do is iterate across that array. So let's take a look at what an array coming from a column binding would look like. 
So an array from a column binding is going to return something like this. And what I really need to do is turn it sideways so that I have something like this. This is how I need it to look. So the value at function, that's going to let me iterate across this. So if I pass in the value at function at 0, that's going to give me my A. And if I pass it through with a 1, that's going to give me my, my B. If I pass it through with a 2, that's going to give me my C. And if I pass it through with any other value, it's going to return null. But the weird thing is, it doesn't return null. It returns the word null. So that's why we'll have to filter those out at the end once we've done all of our bindings. So let's get all of this other stuff out of here because we really don't need it. We've got our placeholder SQL query in there. Let's go ahead, run it, hit done. And now we're going to get that guy on the screen. Come on, make room. You got company coming. We're going to pull that over here. This is going to be lens one. So now we see we have that placeholder that's going to take these two different nulls right here. So I'm going to go ahead and save my dashboard again. Because somehow, whenever I save frequently, I never seem to make mistakes. You only make mistakes when those mistakes are going to cost you hours and hours of work. All right, so let's go ahead and flip into the JSON mode. And unfortunately, our SQL query is now just one big blob. So what we're going to do is first, we're going to get our bindings in place. And uh, unfortunately, you know, we don't have it nicely broken out by it. We can't really, you know, those line breaks are just returning a slash r slash n slash r. And uh, we're going to just have to use our parsing eyes and figure it out as we go along. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find replace and I'm going to replace that slash placeholder. And I'm going to replace it with that binding that I showed you earlier. So now the problem though right now is now they're all returning the first value or value zero. And I don't really want that. I need it to increment as I go. So I have to manually go through this. So then on number two, I need to change this to a one. On number three, I need to change this to a two. And this is very tedious, error prone work. And another tip is this is what I would usually like copy all of this, drop it into my text editor so I can get it into a format like this where it's a lot easier to read. And then I would be, you know, I would do my uh, editing like that. So now let's take a look and see if that actually did the thing because we might be done here. Oh, wow, look at that. So it grabbed our mystery meats and it grabbed our tofus. And those other eight rows that aren't returning that I did build placeholders for, those just uh, turned into nulls and got filtered out. In fact, I'll drop the filter on that real quick so we can see what it would look like with them. So right here we say, finally, filter by null. We can see those additional root rows are coming through with a string value of null. So now I built this out for 10. Now what if it happened that we had 11 products that we weren't selling? We would only see 10 of them. Now you're gonna need to do one of these uh, streams for each one of the different possible potential products that you're not selling. So if you have a thousand products in your catalog and you're selling 900-ish of them, you know, then you might, you might have a problem because you're eventually going to run into a character cap. I haven't tested the upper limit of this, but I would think that it's probably somewhere around 100. Now, you only need placeholders for the, the, the products that you're not selling. So again, if you've got 1,000 products and you're selling 900 of them, you need 100 placeholder rows. You don't need 1,000. So this does scale somewhat well, but you're going to want to do it on a low cardinality field. Uh, so something that doesn't have a bajillion options in it. You know, if you, I wouldn't suggest ever trying this on something like account name, but if you've got, you know, 40, 50, 60 values in your grouping field, I think that this is probably a safe solution. Although again, it is a little tricky to implement and can be kind of error prone. So that's all we've got for tonight. I, I gotta say, I do really like the colors on this new title card. Uh, and you know, please let me know in the comments what you think of it uh, or what you think of the video or if you have any questions. So if you enjoyed this video though, please like, subscribe, tell a friend, and as always, thanks for watching.